day four at Euronaval 2016. Today we're focusing on the underwater domain. So SMX 3.0 is a concept ship. Um, she's, a, in fact, she's a great showcase for a, a technological element developed by DCNS in the field of submarine. So, um, as you can see, uh, uh, she's with a, with a perfectly hydrodynamic uh, shape, uh, characterizing uh, of DCNS brand. And uh, inside this uh, beautiful shape, uh, she is really uh, operationally efficient. Uh, for example, uh, she is uh, totally stealth, totally quiet. Uh, she is fitted with a, a, a sonar system, a complete sonar system, uh, which uh, detects uh, even further. Uh, she is fitted with uh, also uh, uh, up to uh, 30 weapons, uh, including uh, missiles and torpedoes. Um, she can deploy and control drones and special operation forces. She is looking into the future for the Generation Z of people, uh, especially because she is fitted with a lot of digital, uh, digital technology, uh, called, uh, so-called 3.0 technology. Um, uh, at the end of the day, this ship will be uh, very efficient because uh, she will be fitted with an onboard computerized system uh, coming from uh, data centers, uh, very reliable, uh, very efficient, uh, and very power powerful, able to, uh, to treat, uh, for example, 1,000 teraoctet of data a day. Uh, she is fitted with an air independent propulsion system. This is a fuel cell of second generation uh, designed by DCNS. Uh, the main asset of this tool, of this element, is to be able to produce hydrogen with a regular gasoline on board. And that, that uh, means that there is no more hydrogen tank on board, which is more safe, which is safer. safer. Uh, so this is a model of uh, one of our manned submersibles. Uh, we currently have uh, this, we've nicknamed it the S302. Uh, it, it's about uh, just short of 10 meters long, uh, about a uh, little over seven meters in diameter. Uh, it carries uh, six swimmers uh, and two pilots. It is designed to be able to lock in and lock out the swimmers. Uh, typically, uh, this would uh, uh, transit from uh, its launch uh, vehicle vessel. Uh, it would go to its uh, wherever its uh, uh, mission area was. Uh, it would settle on the bottom, uh, and the swimmers would uh, lock in and lock out out of the front here. There's two compartments: the uh, navigation operations compartment astern, and the uh, uh, passenger compartment in the lock-in lock-out chamber in the forward part of the vessel. Its range, uh, it varies obviously based on speed. Uh, I, I will tell you that it'll go about uh, somewhere between 60 and 100 miles, nautical miles, uh, at about five knots of speed. Obviously, if it uh, was to travel a little bit faster, uh, it, it might not be able to go quite as far. Uh, it's also designed to uh, uh, rest on the bottom if the swimmers lock out uh, for as much as a day, it's about 24 hours. Uh, to enable them to uh, swim to wherever they're going and then swim back and then uh, still be able to transit back to their uh, launch ship. We think it, uh, it's unique because of its uh, uh, payload capabilities, the number of swimmers that it can carry along with uh, any equipment that they need, uh, and its excellent navigation uh, as well as its, uh, its uh, depth uh, limits down to 100 meters. Uh, that this product is on the line of products of acoustic system because Alcimar have four main line of products on radio communication, special forces, and the glider and sea explorer glider on the water vehicles. Uh, for the acoustic system, we have ma many uh, equipment. This specific equipment have been used during uh, just in Ju last June because perhaps you know that uh, there is an aircraft from uh, Egypt Air coming from Paris to Caire and crash in Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we deploy this equipment with a uh, three guy from Alcimar on a French uh, Navy vessel, Laplace vessel. They go on the area and thanks to the detector, 
they find the black box uh, after two days on, on the area. The main feature is that you, you drop the detectors at about 1,000 meters on the, under the sea, then they listen all the noise on, on, on the sea, then you, there is a soft treatment above the warship, uh, and you are able to detect very, very thin uh, acoustic noise on the sea. We produce the Subaviators Orca Sub. This is a one atmosphere diving submersible. It's very different from traditional small subs because of its speed and duration. This can produce 10 knots of speed uh, and it's no problem to travel 20, 30, 40 kilometers underwater. Uh, it's an excellent device for protection of national assets, also for surveillance and reconnaissance missions, uh, and can also be used to rescue uh, submersibles or uh, investigate other uh, uh, craft uh, that are perhaps sunken underwater. The depth possibilities for this submersible are 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, and we even have a 6,000 foot version. Most submersibles are these bubble-shaped uh, craft and it's very difficult to push them fast underwater. Uh, this is because of the torpedo shape, because it's using uh, uh, aircraft type uh, uh, wings and tail to maneuver. It's very efficient and can go very, very fast. Highly maneuverable, also very difficult to see on the surface. So for reconnaissance missions, it's an excellent platform. Today at Euronaval, France and the UK decided to continue their collaboration for the combined Maritime Mine Countermeasures Programme. The agreement signed today in presence of DGA and UK MOD representatives call for the production of two units, one for the UK and one for France. The main uh, mission of uh, this uh, MMCM uh, system, uh, just MMCM stands for Maritime Mine Countermeasure, are exactly the same of the mine hunters that we use today, the mine hunters made of GRP, uh, made of composite. So the mission is detection, classification, location, identification, neutralization or destruction. So the main difference, uh, if you compare to the classical mine hunters, because we need to renew for the next decade all the capability, is to use unmanned vehicle. It could be unmanned surface vehicle or unmanned underwater vehicle, a remote operating vehicle. So it's fully autonomous, but you have a, a remote monitoring that that is made in real time. So you know exactly what are the parameters of the, the unmanned system. So it's controlled by man at any time. As an autonomous system, the system could be monitoring, uh, remotely monitoring or remotely controlled. Uh, thanks to this POC, it stands for Portable Operating Center. So it's a uh, it's a shelter that contains the SISU system, the post-processment analysis, and uh, some screens to have uh, a, common, uh, a common operation picture and to prepare the mission.